Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining me from. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Accept my greeting according to your time zone. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You can be among the first to receive it. Then go to the comment section at all time. Leave your comment, drop your contribution. If you have suggestions, make it out there. If you have any criticism, put it down on the comment section. It will make us to get better. Presenting you a better program. Israelites are us and we are Israelites. I want you to go back to the Bible for some of you that actually study the scriptures. You will see that any time the Israelites want to go to war, God will say to them, go to that place, conquer it, defeat them, and come back. Don't take their land. Don't even take anything that belongs to them. Do you know that is how our land is structured? Nobody can say that we went to war to take a land that did not belong to us. Every other major tribe or ethnic group in Nigeria went to war of conquest to conquer other people we never did. People that never went to war never conquered anybody are the ones who are being accused of being um, dominating the yoruba nation you see today are made up of very many subgroups ijebu man is different from an oyo man an oyo man is different from an elaje man different different but because of the existence or the expansion of the Oyo Empire, all of them came under one rulership and one language. The Igbo man never did the same thing. The Igbo people, we are numerical in number to such an extent that they could have conquered anybody they wanted to. But in our land, if you go from Ibeku, in Omoaiha to Ahoho, in Omoaiha, or you go to Olokorom, or you go to Ikuano, or you go to Obakala, Let's assume that the people want to start a conquest. Yes? You go to Obaka and ask Obaka people, come, come and join us. Let's go and conquer Hongho people. They will tell you that you're drunk. They won't join you. Because we are the people that practice the purest form of republicanism. The purest form of it. We are the only advanced civilization in the world not to have a king. Even Israelites begged God to give them a king. And he gave them Saul. And he said to them, you have abandoned the Lord your God in heaven to guide and to lead you. If you want flesh to be your king, I will give you flesh to be your king. And you will suffer. And he gave them Saul. And they suffered. But in the land of Biafra, the land of the Asians, we said nobody can be king over us. Only God is king. That is why we name our children Chibweza. Only God is king. Now you understand it. People with this type of mindset cannot conquer anybody. Because I can't go to Mbisa and say to Mbisa people, come on, let's go to, let's go to Ihiaba. Let's go to somewhere around the naked. If you can't conquer them, they will tell you they are not going. Go and sit in your house and be a king to your wife and your children, not to, not over us. That is why the only thing we know to do in life is dialogue and consensus. Some of you did not understand that was the reason why OKZ also had the guts to say what he said yesterday on channel's television. That you cannot defeat an ideology. Who doesn't know that? You can't defeat it. Do you know that Christendom got to Rome? Nero and all the powerful rulers of Rome tried to kill as many Christians as possible to subdue Christianity. I want Flanny Janjaweed to understand. That is why we don't give a damn what you're doing in our land. All the extrajudicial killings, all the massacre, it only makes us stronger and more radical. On all these threats of, we are going to cross them. You have not crossed Flanny Janjaweed. You have not crossed Flanny um, Yetiala. You have not crossed Flanny Bandits. A whole Nigeria is working with ISIS. This is something that uh, uh, Biden needs to know. If Obama will let him know, know this. It doesn't matter how many people you kill in our land. Those who survive, those that will survive your pogrom and your deal will become a million times more radicalized. Look at Imo states today because you killed Ikonso. That is why Hope Sonema cannot come outside again. 
If the zoo thinks they are going to win this very battle, they are dreaming. And as I said, at the end of this, for any caliphate to be sacked from Sokoto, put my words down on paper, they will be sacked from there. Those that fought for us and defended our land fought with nothing for three years, against the whole world for three years. Henry Kissinger was begging President Nixon. These people, they are Igbo Jews, try and help them. Kissinger was waiting for green light from the UK. Britain kept saying, we have a special relationship with America. America, please don't intervene. It's our former colony. Remember the agreement we had. We can give them flag independence, but in, in, a, in actual fact, we're still controlling them. That was what happened to Africa. Independence, independence. They only gave you flag independence. You are not free in Africa. You are never free and can never be free until Biafra is free. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? Until Biafra is free. These are the things that some of you must understand. You see people that we are, we are locking down our homes for today, they fought with their bare hands for three years. Despite the bombing, despite everything, it was at the end of the war that Nixon now said that had uh, Biafra held out for six more months that America would have come in. But by then it was too late. By then all the saboteurs have assembled themselves in Lagos and now they are Ziki where Opa they are sick as we have today. You know there was in Lagos and Abuja writing their epistle and talking rubbish about uh, mature rubbish nonsense. Drew Hono. Ojuku was hated by his own some not by we love him of course to bits hated by the traitors and the saboteurs we had in our midst. They were in Lagos as they are doing now, writing and talking rubbish, claiming one Nigeria. My happiness is that their villages are under siege, some of them. All those that fought against Biafra today, they are suffering. Every ethnic nationality in the zoo that joined hands to fight against Biafra, today they are under the cush. And they are feeling the pains. As I told you many years ago, Everything we suffered in Biafra, they are all going to experience it. Is it not happening now? Of course it is. That is why at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. 67 to 1970. We will remember them. And do not forget, may after, even after this program, you are going to pray over and over Psalm number one. Tomorrow we pray Psalm number two. For 150 days, Elohim should bear us witness. People have been saying that um, Fulani people invaded a Bonny state. The killings took place in Benue state, actually, but it is our people, Izi people, that should have been in a Bonny state. But Nigeria made them northern Nigerians. So when a Janjaweed is talking from Sokoto, he is also claiming our people, easy people of a Boeing state, that they carved into Benue state. I hope you're paying attention. For those who don't understand why we are fighting this very war to liberate our land. Our people are part of the North. So when they say the Northern Nigeria, there are evil people who are Northern Nigerians. Can you believe such rubbish? Do you see why... I had no respect for Niawo, but he was a learned man. He went to school, he can speak very fine grammar. And I said to him, how can you be your Hanese president general and there are Igbo people in, uh, as part of northern Nigeria? How is that possible? In Kogi and in Benue State, how is that possible? If I am to be the Hanese president general tomorrow, heaven forbid, of course. I will make sure that every Igbo person comes under one umbrella until you say you're not Igbo. Izi people are in Benue State and are being massacred. The name of the community is Ubo Enyim Obete in Ado local government area of Benue State. Not in your own Igbo state. These are our people that they carved into such injustice. I, I sometimes I wonder with our people. Such level of injustice, how can you allow it to just pass and do nothing about it? Our people are being killed. 
Although the place is only accessible through Obala town of a Boeing local government area, but the people who are being killed, uh, they say they removed our app from where? It's no longer on Play Store. <laughs> Britain is working over time. They said that IPOB community radio app is no longer on the Play Store. Of course, it won't be. It's Britain, they have money. Uh, uh, how much do they have? They went to Google. Is it not Google that owns uh, Play Store? Go to Google now and write in the name the kind of on the search engine on Google and see the news you will get to try to poison the mind and the hearts of the world. Now go to DocDocGo, you know that search engine. Go to Bing, another search engine. Go and go to Firefox, go and type in Nam they can compare the results, you will see. Everything on Google is bad news to portray me as a terrorist, to portray me as a killer. Because full and they are controlled by El Rufai. They have over 30 billion dollars war chest to keep Nigeria one and to be milking all of you. The Chipo Picardia is fighting for us. And they can never win. They've removed it from Play Store. And I'm not surprised. They, this was what the, I want people to understand that these things we are encountering today was exactly what they did between 67 and 70. Before Britain kills you with their foreign slaves, they will first demonize you. That's their classic. I, I, I read in Britain, so I know what I'm talking about. I know them very well. They will first demonize you. That's what they do. Very clever. A very clever move. They will first demonize. They will use the media. They will demonize you. They will demonize you. They will demonize you. So that when they come to kill you, nobody will be asking after you. Very clever plan. And that's what they're doing now. Do you know how I knew this? You know, some of you just go through history. You don't do your research. I do research. You know, when they kept calling Ojuku secessionist, you did this, you did that. I kept wondering. I kept wondering. When it occurred to me that this is how Britain operates, I went back to a British conference to go and do my research. It was during the research that it occurred to me that Ojuku did not actually start the war. It was Nigeria that started the war by firing the first shot at a place called Gekem. If I'm not mistaken, do you understand? Ojuku went to Abuli to go and negotiate restructuring. Now listen carefully. It was the same Britain that said no to restructuring. Because Britain was afraid that with restructured Nigeria, if you take Nigeria back to the regions, the likes of Dr. Michael Obaran and Wolowo and all the rest of them will continue to grow the economy of the South because as at 1964, 1965, 1966, Biafra land, the East, had the largest and the fastest growing economy in the whole world. Dr. Michael Obaran, may your soul rest in the bosom of the Most High. Dr. Michael Opera had the fastest growing economy in the whole world. He was growing the economy of Biafra at the rate of 40% every blessed year. Britain wanted to stop it. Are you listening to me? Britain wanted to stop it. That was the reason for the war. Britain went and convinced Zog, convinced a few other people that things are not working very well in Nigeria, that there must be a coup. Britain MI5 engineered the coup, claiming that if they overthrow Tafawa Balewa, they will appoint Awolowo as the head of state. Are you following me? That was how we ended up in this trap today. Everything that happens in the zoo, they look for an evil man to blame. That's what they do. It was Britain that inspired the coup. A coup of officers from all over Nigeria, they got together, sat Tafawa Balewa. But some of what they did not know was the target of Britain was Biafra. Not Nigeria. Their target is to stop the economic miracle of Dr. Michael Obama. Here is a black race doing something that other black people cannot do. Here is a black race with a cement factory, ceramic factory. They had everything. They had Niger steel. They had everything. We must stop them. That was the reason for the war. If you don't know, let me tell you now. 
That was why they had a coup. That was the reason why, thank you very much for correcting us. They said that Radio Biafra app is still there. Please do not bring us fake information. Please, I beg of you. Are you following what I'm preaching to you this morning of the 31st when Biafra land is under lockdown? Are you listening to me? Britain demonized to kill. Once the coup finished, they now went to Fulani and told Fulani, the person that killed your revered leader, Amadou Bello, is an Igbo man, no longer Niger Delta. The Igbo, he made the following remarks. Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. The Igbo domination mantra and general dislike for the Igbo, whom the British and everyone else felt were too loud and proud, somewhat became a uniting factor in pre-independence Nigeria and post-independence Nigeria, among the various ethnic nationalities in Nigeria, but more potent in the north. One of the results of the pre-independence pieces of evidence of why Igbos are hated in Nigeria was the Joss riot of 1945 and the killing of Ndi Igbo, which was as a result of increased tension between the northerners and the easterners a product of the Igbo domination and encroachment sentiment in the north. Another was the massacre of Igbo coal miners in Enugu on 18th November 1949 by northern soldiers under the command of British officers. 21 Igbo men were shot dead while 51 others sustained injuries. The next time the Igbo were killed in Nigeria was in 1953 in Kano. For no fault of theirs, but only being present in a great number in Kano, the northern mob invaded Sabongiri and slaughtered Ndibo and destroyed their properties. This particular violence and massacre of Easterners were planned and coordinated by Malam Inu Awada of the Northern People's Congress NPC a political party that evolved from the native authority administration. His reason for unleashing local government security officials and the mob on the Easterners was because Chief Akintola's action group party booed and abused the northern members of the NPC in Lagos, and Akintola was planning to come to Kano. Malam Inu Awada and his people wanted to revenge against the Yoruba but somehow ended up killing Igbo people who had nothing to do with the differences between the NPC and the action group who never showed up in Kano. This also is another evidence of why Igbos are hated in Nigeria because if not for sheer hate and disdain, why would the northern mob organized to harass Chief Akintola and his people turn on the Igbo, kill them and destroy their properties? The hostilities against the Igbo in Nigeria would continue till after independence. The 1966 coup of January led by Major Chuku Manzogu was the perfect ignition to the time bomb that had been taken in Nigeria. The coup was an excuse to unleash genocide against the Igbo. And by 1971, the genocide which lasted four years had taken more than 3 million Igbo lives. The first year, 1966, saw over 100,000 Igbo being killed in various pogroms in the north, while 1967 to 1971 saw millions killed in the Biafran War. In the three to four years of the war, history saw the whole of Nigeria the House of Fulani, the Yoruba, the Thief, the Idoma, the Benin, and other ethnic nationalities turned against the Igbo and attempted to wipe them from the face of the earth in what would 
be described as an African Holocaust. After the war, which was fought to stop the Igbo from leaving the Nigerian state, the Igbo who wanted their nation were forced to return to the federation called Nigeria, but were never fully welcomed back into the nation. What they faced after the war was economic ostracization, political marginalization, and social bullying. This marginalization, which is a precipitate of the Igbophobia in Nigeria, is still present to date. 30 mass killings from 1945 till date that prove Igbophobia and why Igbos are hated. It is very easy for an average non Igbo Nigerian to say that the Igbo are not hated in Nigeria and that their cry of marginalization and suppression is simply a victimhood mentality. The truth is that whoever is of that opinion is outright dubious and hates to hear the truth or even speak the truth. There are over 100 years of evidence to prove that the Igbo are hated in Nigeria and are only being tolerated in most cases. A clear example is the number of times the Igbo have been attacked and killed in various